So let's, um, I just did that. Let's learn how to name cycloalkanes. So cycloalkanes are named in much the same way that straight chain alkanes are. You count the number of carbons in the ring and name the parent cyclic chain. So if it's five carbons in the ring, it's a pentane, and you put the prefix cyclo in front of it to indicate that that's pentane in a circle. Then you're going to look at any substituents that are attached to the ring. We name those the same way that we did for acyclic alkanes. The numbering is a little bit different. If there's only one ring substituent, if there's only one thing attached to it, you don't have to say what carbon it's attached to. Because we're always going to number these to give it the lowest, and so it would always be one. We would always start there. If there's two substituents, um, this rule here, when there are two or more substituents, the, you number the atoms in the ring, um, beginning with the substituent of higher alphabetical priority. So you're going to look for the one that is first in the alphabet. And then from there, you're going to proceed around, and you can go clockwise or counterclockwise in a way to give the other substituent the lower number. So why can you go clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, which side of it are you looking at? Okay, if I'm looking at the front of it, and going clockwise, that's the same as going around the other side of it and going counterclockwise. And so it's just a matter of orientation. And these, you know, these things float around and flop around. They don't stay static. If you have three or more, um, you're going to go based on the lowest set of numbers. So if you have two or more equivalent numbering sets, alphabetical priority determines the set used. Okay, and this is where things start to get, wow, there's all these weird details. Okay, you don't need to use the detail unless you have that situation. So this is where you had to do a lot of practicing and checking your answers to see if you're getting it right. And if you're not getting it right, then you go back and look at the rules. Okay, what rule did I miss? Why did I get that wrong? Okay. Um, I will try to find some online resources. I am sure that there are web free websites out there with nomenclature quizzes that you can do. And, and those could be really helpful. I think you do the homework problems in the book first and then go test your skills on some other things. And I'll, I'll try to post some links for things like that. So let's look at this guy. He's named for us, but let's look at why he's named that way. So we're going to look at the ring. The ring has six carbons in it. So that's where cyclohexane comes from. Six carbons is hexane. These are in a ring, so it's cyclohexane. Then we're going to look at the things that are attached to the ring. And you'll often see this, where the ring itself is the line angle, and then the substituents may be condensed structural formulas. And we do that sometimes. We'll combine different kinds of, of formulas just to make things clearer. So this is a methyl group, and that's a methyl group, and this is an ethyl group. So we have ethyl, and we have two methyl groups. So that's going to be dimethyl. The di, this numerical prefix, doesn't count for alphabetizing. That's just telling us how many. So E comes before M. <coughs> so ethyl is going to be listed first, and then dimethyl cyclohexane. Now why is the numbering chosen that way? Well, we could number um, two different ways. We could start with this being number one, two, three. Okay, that would give us uh, one ethyl, three, three dimethyl. Altogether, those are higher numbers than three, one, one. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. 
So add them up. 3 plus 1 plus 1 is 5. 1 plus 3 plus 3 is 7. 5 is lower than 7. That's better. Any questions about that one? Yes? One is always going to be on a substituent. Okay. It's, it's different than with a straight chain. A straight chain has an end. This is a circle. Where's the beginning? We get to decide. So we're always going to start so that one of them is a one. Good question. Now, what if this only had two substituents? Let's do this. Um, actually, let me erase all of that. And then this is... This is fun. We're going to make that guy disappear. And let's see. I'm going to make this disappear too. So how do we name that guy? Is it still cyclohexane? Yeah, it's still cyclohexane. So maybe I shouldn't have erased that. Cyclohexane. Now we have one methyl group and one ethyl group. So we could number this starting with the ethyl group, one, two, three, or we could start, let's do a different color. We could start here, one, two, three. We're going to end up with a one and a three either way. But there has to be one best name. How do we decide? Well, that's what the previous slide said. When there's two, you give the lower number to the one that comes first in the alphabet. So ethyl comes before methyl, and so we're going to use the black numbering. And we're going to call this 1-ethyl-3-methyl-cyclohexane. I could be wrong, but I think, you know, when they made up these rules... They're not trying to make them difficult. They're trying to be as straightforward and simple as possible. So you get a question like, you know, we had here. You've got two, and no matter how you number it, you're going to have the same numbers. You need a tiebreaker, right? And so we're just, well, we did the alphabetical thing with the names, so let's give the first one the low number, and the second one, the higher number. Okay? Any other questions? So if the methyl is the lower number, then it would go, it would go in front instead of this? Um, let's, let's do this. Let's change it up again. Um, let's change this. and make this one propyl. Oh, hmm, it was undesired. Okay. So now we've got methyl and propyl. We have the same number in quandary, 1, 3, or 3, 1. Methyl and propyl, which one comes first in the alphabet? Methyl. So we're going to call it 1-methyl. So we're going to go 1-methyl, 3-propyl. Oops. Cyclohexane. Okay, does that help?
Any other questions?